Sidney Poitier was a Bahamian-American actor, director, activist, and diplomat, renowned as the first black actor and first Bahamian to win the Academy Award for Best Actor in 1964. He received multiple honors, including two competitive Golden Globe Awards, a BAFTA Award, and a Grammy Award, as well as nominations for Emmy and Tony Awards. He was ranked among the American Film Institute's 100 Stars in 1999 and was one of the last surviving stars from Hollywood's Golden Age. Born in Miami to Bahamian parents, Poitier grew up in the Bahamas before moving to the U.S. He gained fame with his role in Blackboard Jungle, 1955, and became the first black actor to receive an Academy Award nomination for The Defiant Ones, 1958. Poitier won the Oscar for Lilies of the Field, 1963, and broke new ground with films such as Porgy and Bess, 1959, A Raisin in the Sun, 1961, and In the Heat of the Night, 1967. He became the top box office star in 1968 and later directed films like Buck and the Preacher, 1972, and Stir Crazy, 1980. Poitier received numerous honors, including an honorary knighthood, 1974, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, 2009, and the BAFTA Fellowship, 2016. He also served as the Bahamian Ambassador to Japan from 1997 to 2007. Early Life Sidney Poitier was born on February 20, 1927, in Miami, Florida, to Afro-Bahamian parents, Evelyn and Reginald Poitier, who were farmers from Cat Island in the Bahamas. Born prematurely during a business trip, Poitier's parents stayed in Miami to nurse him back to health. He grew up in the Bahamas, a British colony at the time, and later moved to Nassau at age 10, where he experienced modern amenities for the first time. At 15, Poitier moved to Miami but struggled with the racism of Jim Crow era Florida. He then relocated to New York City at 16, where he worked as a dishwasher while pursuing acting. After failing an initial audition with the American Negro Theater, he was helped by a Jewish waiter who taught him to read fluently. During World War II, Poitier lied about his age to enlist in the army but was discharged after feigning mental illness due to his dissatisfaction with the treatment of psychiatric patients at the hospital where he worked. After his discharge, Poitier successfully auditioned for the American Negro Theater, beginning his acting career. Career Sidney Poitier faced initial rejection from the American Negro Theater due to his inability to sing, which contrasted with the expectations of black actors at the time. Determined to improve, he worked on his acting and speech, eventually landing a leading role in Lysistrata, though the show ran for only four days. This led to further opportunities, including understudying in Anna Lucasta. In 1947, Poitier co-founded the Committee for the Negro in the Arts, CNA, a left-wing organization focused on class and racial issues. His involvement with the CNA and friendships with prominent leftist black artists, such as Paul Robeson, resulted in his blacklisting during the McCarthy era. Despite this, Poitier refused to sign a loyalty oath, even when offered a role in Blackboard Jungle, 1955. Poitier's breakthrough came with his performance in No Way Out, 1950, where he portrayed a doctor treating a racist patient. This role led to more significant opportunities, including Cry, The Beloved Country, 1951, and Blackboard Jungle. His performance in Edge of the City, 1957, solidified his rising stardom. Poitier also valued his work with director William Wellman on Goodbye, My Lady, 1956, whose humanity and sensitivity influenced Poitier's later directing style, particularly in Buck and the Preacher, 1971. In 1958, Sidney Poitier starred alongside Tony Curtis in The Defiant Ones, a critical and commercial success. Both actors were nominated for Academy Awards, with Poitier becoming the first black male to be nominated for Best Actor. He also won the British Academy Film Award for Best Foreign Actor. In 1959, Poitier starred in the Broadway production of A Raisin in the Sun, which was groundbreaking in its portrayal of black life. He later reprised his role in the film adaptation, earning further acclaim. 
Poitier continued his success with films like Porgy and Bess, 1959, Paris Blues, 1961, and Lilies of the Field, 1963, for which he became the first black man to win an Academy Award for Best Actor. However, he worried that this achievement would limit his future roles to token characters. Despite his concerns, Poitier's career soared in 1967 with three hit films, To Sir, With Love, In the Heat of the Night, and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. These films, though varied in tone, all explored racial divides, with Poitier's performances widely praised. By the late 1960s, Poitier was criticized for being typecast as idealized, non-threatening black characters, a pattern he acknowledged but felt conflicted about. While he desired more diverse roles, he was also committed to challenging racial stereotypes in an industry where he was the only black actor consistently in leading roles. Despite these tensions, his films of the 1960s were later recognized as significant contributions to the social thriller genre. Sidney Poitier's most iconic role as Virgil Tibbs in In the Heat of the Night led to two sequels, They Call Me Mr. Tibbs, 1970, and The Organization, 1971. He made his directorial debut in 1972 with The Western Buck and The Preacher, which he also starred in, followed by his second film, A Warm December, 1973. Poitier co-founded First Artists Production Company with Barbara Streisand and Paul Newman to allow actors greater control over their projects. Working with First Artists, Poitier directed and starred in successful comedies like Uptown Saturday Night, 1974, Let's Do It Again. 1975, and A Piece of the Action, 1977, all with Bill Cosby. His highest grossing film as a director was Stir Crazy, 1980, starring Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder. Poitier continued directing films like Fast Forward, 1985, and Ghost Dad, 1990, reuniting with Cosby in the latter. As an actor, Poitier starred in notable films in later years, including Shoot to Kill, 1988, Sneakers, 1992, and The Jackal, 1997. In the 1990s, Sidney Poitier starred in several acclaimed television movies and miniseries, including Separate but Equal, 1991, To Sir, With Love 2, 1996, Mandela and De Klerk, 1997, and The Simple Life of Noah Dearborn, 1999. His performances earned him Emmy nominations for Separate but Equal and Mandela and De Klerk, as well as a Golden Globe nomination for the former. In 2001, Poitier won a Grammy Award for Best Spoken Word Album. In 2002, Poitier was honored with an Honorary Academy Award for his contributions to American cinema. During the same ceremony, Denzel Washington, upon winning Best Actor for Training Day, paid tribute to Poitier, acknowledging his trailblazing legacy. With Ernest Borgnine's death in 2012, Poitier became the oldest living recipient of the Best Actor Oscar. He appeared at the 2014 Academy Awards alongside Angelina Jolie to present the Best Director Award, receiving a standing ovation for his contributions to Hollywood. In 2021, the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures honored him by naming its main lobby the Sidney Poitier Grand Lobby. Poitier was a lifelong advocate for racial and social justice, rejecting roles that perpetuated offensive racial stereotypes. Poitier was a member of the Walt Disney Company's board of directors from 1995 until 2003. Poitier was named the Bahamas Ambassador to Japan in April 1997, and he served in that capacity until 2007. In addition, he served as the Bahamas ambassador to UNESCO from 2002 to 2007. Personal Life From April 29, 1950, to 1965, Poitier was wed to Juanita Hardy in his first marriage. They reared their family at a home on the Hudson River in Stuyvesant, New York, even though Poitier moved to Mount Vernon in Westchester County, New York, in 1956. Poitier started a nine-year relationship with actress Diane Carroll in 1959. He wed Canadian actress Joanna Shimkus on January 23, 1976, the two had co-starred in the 1969 film The Lost Man. The couple stayed together until his passing. With his first wife, 
Poitier had four daughters, Gina, Pamela, Beverly, and Sherry. Anika and Sidney Tamia, his two kids from his second marriage, were born. Poitier was blessed with eight grandkids and three great-grandsons. In September 2019, Poitier's family had 23 missing relatives after Hurricane Dorian made landfall in the Bahamas. Death On January 6, 2022, Sidney Poitier passed away at his Beverly Hills home at the age of 94. His death was due to cardiopulmonary failure, with Alzheimer's disease and prostate cancer as underlying causes. The news was confirmed by Fred Mitchell, the Bahamian Minister of Foreign Affairs. Tributes poured in following Poitier's death. President Joe Biden praised him for his influence on American society, while former President Barack Obama called him a symbol of dignity and grace. Michelle Obama, Bill Clinton, and Hillary Clinton also honored his legacy. Prominent figures in the entertainment industry, such as Martin Scorsese, Harry Belafonte, Morgan Freeman, and Oprah Winfrey, among others, paid tribute to Poitier's remarkable talent and grace. Broadway theaters dimmed their lights in his honor on January 19, 2022. Additionally, the 2022 Ebert Fest Film Festival dedicated its event to Poitier and Gilbert Gottfried. Acting Credits and Accolades Sidney Poitier became the first black actor to win the Academy Award for Best Actor for his role in Lilies of the Field, 1963. Throughout his career, he earned numerous accolades, including a Grammy Award, two Golden Globe Awards, and a British Academy Film Award. In 2001, he received an Academy Honorary Award for his lifetime achievement in film. Other notable honors include the AFI Life Achievement Award in 1992, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1994, and the Golden Globe Cecil B. DeMille Award in 1981. In 2016, Poitier was awarded the BAFTA Fellowship, and in 2022, he was inducted into the National Multicultural Western Heritage Museum. Poitier also received prestigious recognitions such as the Kennedy Center Honor in 1995 and the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Barack Obama in 2009. In 1974, he was named an Honorary Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire by Queen Elizabeth II. He delivered the commencement address at the University of Miami in 1986, where he was awarded an Honorary Doctor of Fine Arts degree. Legacy Sidney Poitier was widely recognized as a trailblazing figure in Hollywood and an icon, as described in his obituary by USA Today. Vanity Fair likened him to the Martin Luther King Jr. of the movies, and he was often hailed as Hollywood's first African-American film star. The New York Times acknowledged his pivotal role in diversifying Hollywood, stating that he paved the way for black actors. The Hollywood Reporter emphasized that Poitier was the first black actor to lead mainstream films in non-stereotypical roles, making his influence on 1950s and 1960s cinema immeasurable. Denzel Washington, while presenting Poitier the Honorary Academy Award in 2002, noted that Poitier transformed the landscape for African-American actors, making him irreplaceable in his films. Poitier was the first black male actor to be nominated for an Academy Award in 1958 and the first to win in 1963. He was often seen as the sole black representative in mainstream cinema during the 1950s and 1960s, especially during the civil rights movement, and was described as an ambassador to white America and a benign emblem of black power. Former President Barack Obama highlighted Poitier's role in advancing racial dialogue and opening doors for future black actors. Poitier's life and legacy were honored in the 2022 documentary Sydney, directed by Reginald Hudlin. We thank you for your time and attention, and that is all the information we currently have about Sidney Poitier. I hope this Sidney Poitier information was helpful. Click the bell icon and subscribe to our feed to receive more content similar to this one so you don't miss anything.